I'll now hand it over to uh, Standard Bank to address us. And for that, I'll welcome uh, Shola David Bora, who is the Chief Executive for Africa Regions for the Standard Bank Group South Africa. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning ladies and gentlemen. Um, I think there's a height adjustment. It's one of the challenges <laughs> of being extra tall. But welcome to the Standard Bank Top Women's Conference 2019. It's a great privilege to be here this year, a great privilege to continue to partner with Top Women's, which is South Africa's leading award conference. And, um, you know, last year we had an exciting award session um, where we gave um, the Lifetime Achievement Award to the former First Lady, Zanel Mbeki, for, you know, the work she has done in empowering women. And, and this year, as Ralph has mentioned, we have an exciting lineup of incredible female speakers. And I urge you to listen attentively, you know, to what they have to share with you, because I believe that um, every single one of them will have a transformative impact, you know, on your businesses and um, on your lives. Standard Bank is very excited with this partnership for a number of reasons. The first is that it aligns with our values, our values of gender empowerment, of diversity, of inclusion. We genuinely believe that when you empower women, you empower the organization, you empower the nation, and certainly our continent of Africa. Our group chief executive, Sim Shabalala, is one of the global thematic champions for the He For She movement. And for those of you who've never heard of He For She, it's really um, a platform that advocates that men and boys um, should support and advocate women and, and girls. And um, across our entire group, you know, we have had um, many of our male executives stepping up, you know, and, and committing, you know, to support this movement. We've also found that, you know, just having a goal without setting targets and dates, it's just a dream, right. you know, and I encourage all of you, if you have goals, make sure you set a target, make sure you set a date, you know, that's what turns it from a dream to a reality. So Standard Bank um, has committed that we will achieve 40% female executives by 2023. And it's a journey, but I believe that as an African female executive um, overseeing 19 of the countries in which Standard Bank is present, that I'm a living testament to how serious Standard Bank is about this goal. And I always tell every woman I meet that if I can become a chief executive in this capacity, anybody, any one of you can do it, I assure you. Mm -hmm. We really believe in Standard Bank that women are the catalyst for growth in Africa because our purpose as a financial services institution is to drive Africa's growth. And as I've traveled across the continent from East Africa to West, Central, Southern Africa, I see women at every point of economic activity. I was in Kenya a few weeks ago, we visited some of their large markets, and the majority of the traders were women. So I asked one of the women, you know, how come there's so many women traders? Where are the men? And she laughed and she said, they're not serious, <laughs> you know. And, you know, um, the statistics support that as well. You know, 70% of 
the informal trade that you see in the SADC region, you know, are driven by women. So anytime you see women, you know, trading on the streets, you know, um, a lot of it is cross-border trades, you know, informal trades, exporting goods, um, but all driven by women. In the agri sector as well, you know, on average, over 50% of economic activity in the agri value chain is driven by women. The farmers are the women. The challenge we have is making sure that the women actually, um, you know, get the lion's share, <laughs> you know, of the work they do in agriculture. Right now, they get a fraction of what is paid in that value chain. But women are the drivers of economic activity in Africa, no question about it. And therefore, as Standard Bank continues in its purpose to drive Africa's growth, we have made sure that we place special emphasis and focus on women. We are partnering, for instance, with the UN um, Women's Organization in Malawi, in Uganda, and in Nigeria in helping to enable women who are in agriculture, who are traders, um, by giving them capacity um, training, capacity building, um, providing financial services solutions for their, for their problems. And we continue to drive um, growth on the continent because we fully understand that the work that we do, the positioning that we have as an Africa-focused institution, the largest bank by assets in Africa, you know, everything we do has an impact on the individual, on the organizations. When we build roads, when we build bridges, it opens up markets, you know, um, it creates access um, from the farms to the cities. So everything we do in Standard Bank touches lives, and we take it very, very seriously. There are three things I want to talk about, about um, driving empowerment. And these three things, I believe, are critical, you know, for you as an individual, in your professional career, um, as an entrepreneur, um, you know, growing your business, as a public servant. Because one of the wonderful things about um, the Top Women's Conference is that it's also a platform that brings together private sector and the public sector. And we have seen that the partnership between the pro public and the private sector is also a key enabler for growth on our continent. Neither side can do it alone. We need each other. So the three drivers for empowerment, the first is passion. Without passion, you cannot achieve any form of empowerment in my view. Um, we are passionate about Africa in Standard Bank Group. And I have found that passion has been one of the major forces that propels you forward. Even when you're afraid, even when you, know, you don't have all the answers and there's lots of uncertainty. But being passionate about what you do is such a critical driver. In my own personal career journey, you know, I have found that you know, passion is an important ingredient. I remember you know, when I was doing my A-levels and my father wanted me to study medicine. It was my passion for economics that overrode you know, um, my, my fear of disobeying him. And I went on to, do, uh, to study economics and also, you know, um, I had developed a passion for banking. And my current role, you know, um, overseeing the Africa regions in Standard Bank is also because I am passionate about our continent, um, Africa. I wouldn't work anywhere else in the world. You know, um, my interest and focus is on Africa and Africa's development. The second driver is really about embracing change. And you know, I'm sure you'll all agree with me that we live in a time of change, constant change. And embracing change is the only way you can continue 
to remain empowered. Standard Bank um, has been in operation for over 156 years, and our intention is to be around for the next 156 plus years. But we've been able to do so by transforming ourselves, by understanding the external environment, and making sure that we are responding in a proactive manner. We're listening to our clients, looking for solutions that solves their problems. The financial sector you know, is facing increasing competition from fintechs. Many of you who are here, and we welcome you, we're in partnership with quite a few, telcos. But it does, does tell you that unless you are able to transform yourself, you could very easily lose relevance with your client. And we have embarked on a digital journey to make sure that we digitize our processes end to end and find digital solutions for our clients' problems. We believe that's the only way that um, Standard Bank can continue to be relevant. And I just want to encourage everyone here that don't be afraid of change. Embrace change. You have to understand the impact of digitization on your organizations. I was talking um, recently to a young lady who approached me and was talking about how she was assisting um, an NGO with a social media project, but she was really looking for another job. She wanted to do something more exciting, you know? And I, and I asked her, you know, has she heard about data science? The fact that, you know, data scientists are one of the most um, valued um, skill um, or, 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 you know, profession today, just because of their ability to interpret data and give insights, customer insights, you know? And she said, no, and I said, you know what? You go get yourself data science certification, do it online. In fact, everybody here should do it online. Um, and it positions you, you know, to be a much more valuable asset, a much more attractive person. You get job offers, you know, rather than sticking to what you already know and, um, you know, the lessons you've learned. So you have to continue to be a learning person, um, embracing change, not being afraid when opportunities are opened up. I was um, overseeing Standard Bank subsidiary in Nigeria um, a couple of years ago. And when I was offered this um, position, it was, it was a huge change. I had to leave my country, move into a new country. Um, I had to engage with a whole range of stakeholders, um, which I wasn't, hadn't done and, and, and was not as um, comfortable with, you know. But the decision to embrace change because of the importance of always making sure that you, you take advantage of opportunities that open up, you know, um, was an important driver for me. So embracing change, like I said, is, is a second driver. And the third one, um, which is by no means um, um, less important, is, is that of doing the right business the right way. Um, in one word, I'll summarize it as governance. Governance. Many times we feel that governance slows you down, and it does, because you don't cut corners, you know, you keep to all the rules. It slows you down, but what it does is that it enables you to grow in a much more sustainable way. It positions you to attract capital, because I can assure you, for many people who are seeking funding, one of the key requirements is that you know, you're running an organization where there is proper adherence to governance. You know. So governance is so important, so critical. You know, it protects your business. You know, and it's, it's a great driver you know, to, to empower you and continue to increase um, your influence in whatever area you've chosen to. I'll close by just reminding us that 
You know, empowerment is not an end in itself. It's a means to an end. I strongly believe that every single one of us can make a difference on the African continent in our own sphere of influence. And as we gain greater influence, as we have greater access to resources, to capital, to people, the ultimate aim is that we should go out and empower others. We have to influence others in a manner, you know, that contributes positively to Africa's development. And everything we learn here, everything we, we, um, we learn and we're exposed to will help contribute to that goal. I have found time and time again that even though there are many external barriers to our growth, that the most difficult challenge at times is the internal barriers in our minds. We set boundaries for ourselves. We make assumptions which are not founded on facts, you know, and ultimately that limits how far we can go. So making that mind shift, shift removing the glass ceilings in our minds is an important and critical um, means of ensuring that we can take advantage of the opportunities that we see around us. I'd like to wish you all a wonderful conference, and I thank you very much for listening.